Welcome back to Can We Have a Conversation? Uh, we have Khalid White, professor, doctor. He has a book and he has a documentary, uh, Black Fatherhood. And so I want to have him talk a little bit about uh, your documentary. How did, uh, how did your documentary start? And, and just give me some components of it. Okay. The documentary started as, as I was taping the interviews to the book. So the, it started off as a book project. Okay. We did audio recording of the book. Mm -hmm. We also, I was like, well, why don't we get somebody just to film the interviews too? Mm -hmm. So um, I knew that I wanted to do something multimedia. A lot of people not reading uh, books like they once did. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are looking at film and videos, mm -hmm. the YouTubes and the Vimeos and that different type of thing. So I said to myself as we were doing it, like, why don't we tape these interviews? Mm -hmm. So we have the audio side and the, and the book side. That beca Well, the audio became the book, the interviews and that type of thing. And then the film became um, its own thing as we edited and cut up the interviews. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it branched into two different two different, you know, um, platforms. Mm -hmm. The book has about, well, the book has 14 people, 12 men, two women, mm -hmm. talking about everything from um, the relationship between the male and the daughter, mm -hmm. the um, war on drugs and how that affected our family. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the perspective of grandfathers. Mm -hmm. We have the perspective of, uh, as a black man, how are you raising biracial kids? Mm -hmm. We have the perspective from how do you take on a another man's child? So you're mm -hmm. raising a non-biological child. Mm -hmm. We talk about the stay-at-home dad. They share their story. We have a brother from Africa talking about the blending of African culture and American culture yeah. and how to kind of yeah. navigate that. Um, if you have kids out of state, we got a brother talking about raising children out of state and how that is kind of, you know, how he balances that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, my story is in there. I share my story of... of you know, getting that call one day that you're not necessarily ready for mm -hmm. and how, you know, that affected me, but that also kind of reflected on my own family, my own parents and mm -hmm. my own, you know, and my story was like, man, I, I can't, I can't be the uh, uh, quote unquote deadbeat because I didn't have a deadbeat. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it's like, you know, I had to live up to a certain standard. Right. We, t we, we just kind of run the gamut. All these different scenarios that black men and black families face um, an entertainer, how do you balance being on the road and entertaining mm -hmm. and also being a parent? Mm -hmm. um, you know, just just a number of different scenarios that, that black men on an average everyday basis are facing. So, 14 different stories in the book. In the film, we kind of narrowed it down a little bit to just uh, five or six stories. Um, so, some of the stories that are in the book are not in the film. Mm -hmm. Some of the stories that are in the film are not in the book. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be a direct match i want to have a little bit of you know a little crossover but right. some difference too right and then we just talk about you know again um who were your role models mm -hmm. um what is the ideal father like to you or look like to you do you remember um when you when you found out that you want to be a father what was the what was the reaction what was the emotion mm -hmm. behind that um we talk about you know again um child support what are we, what about these men who have two and three kids by two and three different women how do you navigate that mm -hmm. that's in the book that's in the film mm -hmm. Um, how are you as a father when you grow up fatherless? Mm -hmm. And how does that affect your parenting? You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's in the book and that's in the film. So all these different, again, emotional topics mm -hmm. and these sensitive topics, you're kind of talking about a little bit of what's, what's captured in here where I had a father present in the house, but he wasn't present emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he was there physically, mm -hmm. but emotionally we didn't mm -hmm. have that connection. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, a man talks about that in there. So all these different topics yeah. that we're dealing yeah. with on a day in and day out basis as men, as fathers, as mentors, as leaders, and just having it from the perspective of black men. Um, because again, we don't get a chance to share often. Mm -hmm. And then two, um, you know, the media tells our story for us 99% yes, yes. of the time. We never get a chance to tell our story and balance it with a counter narrative. Right. So that's really what this work is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, African American studies, which again, I teach, is all about our narrative, mm -hmm. the history from our perspective, right. not from right. George Washington and, right, and you right, know, right. And we talk not from Michelangelo, from right. Maya Angelo. Right. That's right. what that's kind right. of where right. we go. Right. So that's good. That's anyway, good. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about work too much. But no, <laughs> no, no, no. This is good because we you know what we left off was we were talking about, you know, this the the 
the bias and the the opposition yeah. and the resistance that we deal with, you know, just because of being black. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then when you talk about fatherhood, that is another uh, extension uh, of opposition that we have to deal with. You know, even with yourself, uh, I'm sure you're probably one of the youngest teachers at the college, um, you know, and how does that work as far as you have to uh, interact with other faculty members? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and then what you're talking about and you're so passionate about, how do they, you know, think about you in that perspective? Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't want to generalize what everybody else thinks or says about me, but I know this. Um, I know I'm up there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I have a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and my purpose is really to, to develop men and women into, you know, the next generation of leaders, right? That's, that's, the, that's the mantra that I go up there with. Um, I am probably one of the youngest faculty up there still, and I've been up there 10 years. Mm -hmm. I started in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say this, I'm not, a, I'm not connected with athletics. I don't coach, mm -hmm. I don't do any of that type of stuff. I'm up there on the academic side. So I'm one of the few black men who's on the academic side. I'm one of the younger black men. And by and large, I can tell you that I get treated like these black men get treated on these campuses. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they treat me or I've been treated a lot and, and um, dealt with a lot. Like you would deal with Duran and, 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 right. and Dewan and, right. and, and, and right. Dejan. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. And um, so with that in mind, um, you can't deal with these young men in a certain way and not and don't think that doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. So they might not be able to speak up on it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna say something about right. it because now I have a platform and a position to mm -hmm. say something about mm -hmm. it. But when you're speaking about these young men, normally in a negative way, mm -hmm. well, in a in a roundabout way, you're also talking about me. Yes. So we're gonna stop the buck stops with me. Right. You know, we're gonna right. cut that short right. as, as quick as we can. Right. And I'm going to, I don't care who says it. Mm -hmm. I have the um, the right, mm -hmm. the experience, mm -hmm. and I have the wherewithal mm -hmm. to to push back on that, and yes. that's part of what comes with my position. That's good. That's good. That's how because a lot of us uh, get to those positions, and we do have a platform, mm -hmm. but we don't voice our opinion on the platform. Yeah, you know, and you know, young people are looking to you. Mm -hmm. You know whether it's a father figure or a professor or a mentor or someone that can impact their lives. And if you don't speak up for them as well as yourself, uh -huh. then, I mean, they see that, you know, they, they recognize it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, he's not one of us. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. got this education and he, he's black, right. but, but I don't hear him talking about us. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so everything I do is really try to, in a representation of us. And I'm also at the same time, and hopefully at some point somebody can check and verify this. Man, I check the students too. You can't use that N word around right, me. Right, right. You got to pick your pants up and, and, and you know, and, and let's talk to each other like we got some sense and we can't, um, we have to represent ourselves in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I'm also, you know, I'm on some of these young men and women too about, you know, hey man, what you present also affects me too. Right. So if I'm a ride for you, right. you gotta also, you know, you, right. you know, you gotta also kinda carry yourself in a certain a certain manner so we get the respect and the proper recognition we deserve. That's good. As mentally efficient and effective people, which right. we are. Right. You know? I carry the black flag mm -hmm. proudly, mm -hmm. but at the same time too, I also, you know, I want to lead by example and be an example. So um I want these young people to be examples themselves. An example is something positive, not just because you can run the football or you can shoot a jump shot. Right. What else can you do? What else do you do? Right. That's right. great that you do that. What else do you do in addition? Right. Because there's more to you than that. You're gonna be a total person. So That's good. we're trying to build the person. That's good. And so, so when we talk about uh, the black fatherhood yes. and the trials and tribulation, testimonies <clears throat> and triumphs, mm -hmm. oh, when you did this book, yeah. you did it what were you trying to accomplish when you wrote this book? What I was trying to accomplish, a couple things, two things in specific. One, to tell the other side of the story, a, a balanced perspective, the counter narrative to what mainstream mass media puts out there. And then the second was to get um, the community to see that, A, hey, black men do exist, um, and we know that they exist, but let's show 
this existence as black men as being responsible, hands-on, invested, and involved. We often just see only the negative, mm -hmm. and we start to believe that mm -hmm. negative ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just knew too many people like yourself and others who are really invested in working with young people, whether you are their biological parent or not. Mm -hmm. I just think that need to be, you know, have some light shed on it. And I know I'm not the only person who does it, mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to do it just in a way that I felt was the most um, impactful, and that was to throw in a book and in the film. So, you know, my goal is really to get the community behind it. I don't care if mainstream, you know, if it doesn't become a mainstream success, if it's a community success, I'm happy with that because that's what I, I, you know, set out to do. And so far, so good. It's been very well received by by the community, by us. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, man, I showed this in Oakland to a group. Primary of Latinos, they said, "Hey, this is our story too. Yeah, this yeah. makes sense to us too." Yeah. So I'm like, "Well, hey, yeah, you know, because the the ups and downs of life don't have a color to them. Right. They don't have a, 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 a income attached to them. Yeah, right. you probably get an easier, you probably have an easier road if you're white and rich for mm -hmm. sure. There's mm -hmm. in America, hands down. Mm -hmm. But that's not America anymore. America right. is made up of people of, of color primarily right. who are right. struggling, going through ups and downs. Right. And so." Uh, whether you white, black, green, orange, purple, some of these stories you're going to be able to relate to. So what are, what are, um, what are some of the statistics that you mm -hmm. uh, came across in your study? Yeah, well, one of the, the biggest one that I found um, was from a 2015 article by the CDC, Center for Disease Control, which is, you know, one of the biggest kind of research and um, a statistical, for lack of a better term, powerhouses in the nation mm -hmm. was saying that um, in a survey across the board, black men were the most um, active and involved in their children's lives, regardless if they lived in the house or not. Yes. We always hear these statistics like, yeah. you know, 80% of black children are born out of wedlock mm -hmm. and yada, yada, yada. And although that may be true, um, and although that may have some, some legs to it, um, for one, we got to check where this information is coming from, who's doing the research. Mm -hmm. And then for two, even in the face of that research, black men are still the most invested and involved mm -hmm. in that type of thing. So I was like, okay, well, look, we're on to something. Yes. Because again, I just knew too many in my circle. I see the eye test. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I really, um, you know what, I, honestly, man, to be perfectly honest with you, I got to applaud a lot of this hip hop, current hip hop mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes hip hop gets such a negative light put on it because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a lot of foolery in there. Mm -hmm. But man, you see a lot of these athletes and entertainers because hip hop and, and sports now goes hand in hand. Yes. You see Steph Curry with mm -hmm. them beautiful little girls at yes. the podium. Yes. You see Cam Newton and his son. Yes. You you see, you know, Chris Paul and little Chris Paul and yes. all these different yes. examples. Yes. It's like it's in vogue now. They're making right. it, you know, Jay-Z right. with his little daughters and things. Right. So if you do the eye test, Yes. You know, we, 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 we're there. Yeah. We've been there. Yeah. Um, and, and the CDC verified it. But again, that image won't go mainstream. Right. Unless we put it out there. Right, right. Yeah. I, I came across that statistic too. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I thought that was very uh, different because I hadn't heard it until I read it. For but sure. Go ahead. Some yeah. other statistics too. And not to cut you off, no, but some no, other I'm, statistics I wanna hear is like, yes. you know, um, I don't have the exact words and data memorized, but the father's impact on academics, mm. on emotional cognition, on, on, on social emotional context, everything is impacted positively with father mm -hmm. influence and father investment and father, um, you know, just, just presence. It's, yeah, it's huge. You know, huge. like it's... you have a less chance of, of getting into drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. less chance of going to jail, less chance of teenage pregnancy, less chances of all these different types of like um, social ills mm -hmm. are m minimized mm -hmm. when the father's involved. And so if we look at all these social ills that are affecting the African-American community, well, as men, we got to try to reinsert ourselves in our position mm -hmm. to as fathers, as role models, as mentors, et cetera, to, to combat some of these social ills. Mm -hmm. We can't wait on the government to do it. Mm -hmm. If it didn't happen under Obama, it's not going to happen. That's, that's, right. my, that's my perspective right. on it. Right. Didn't happen then, right. you can't expect <laughs> right. <laughs> right. anybody right. else to go on. And right. We got to do it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, I'm a doer, man. I, you mm -hmm. know, I try to, to, to put words into action. Um, I'm not an activist. I'm not a, you know, but I, right. but I do have some influence. And I want right. to use my influence to kind of, you know, to be... Um, positive as much as possible. So 
you know, again, statistically, the father's impact and influence, it brings the levels up on all mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. kind of positive. Mm -hmm. So our children deserve that. Yes. You know, um, our communities deserve that. Yes. We deserve that. We've been through, yeah. you know, so much, oh, right? Yeah. And, and that's the crazy <laughs> thing about it is because we've been through so much and we're still surviving and we've come a long ways. And, and yes, there are. Uh, we are leading the pack, but it still seems like we're failing our mm -hmm. families, mm -hmm. even though we're leading the pack. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it's great to know that, but 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 that that you know, it's also saying to the other fathers, y'all need to step up your game. For sure, you know, you need to you need to be there for your child yeah. because if you don't, these are uh, the consequences. What you just said, all mm -hmm. of those, mm -hmm. you know, and, and no, not just in America and not just black fathers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we talked about mm -hmm. earlier that, you know, this this thing is black fathers, white fathers, Latino, all fathers. Yep. Because the, the, the way that God created this thing was he gave us the name that he has. Father. Mm -hmm. He's the father. He's mm -hmm. father God. Mm -hmm. And what that means is he trusted us to have the name that he has in order to 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 be the foundation of the family. We are the foundation of the family. Absolutely. We know, and, I, and I've heard uh, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe put it this way. He said that if, if a window was broken, they would not abandon the house. If, if, if the door was, was broken, mm -hmm. they wouldn't abandon the house. If the stucco was breaking and there was a hole in the roof, they wouldn't abandon the house. But if the, if the foundation is cracked, yeah, they, <laughs> yes, they're going to hey, abandon the house. That's a great uh, metaphor. Yes, and, 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 and we are the foundation. Mm -hmm. Fathers are, and I'm not disputing the fact that mothers are definitely plays a part as well. Sure. I was raised with a single mother. For I sure. had aunts. I had grandmothers. Sure. They taught me how to treat women. So I got all the respect for women. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is women can't birth a child without a man. Mm -hmm. It's our seed. Mm -hmm. It is the father who needs to give their child not just the son, but the daughter as well, their identity, to give them their structure, even to show a woman what a man looks like. Absolutely. Because if she doesn't see what a man looks like, trust me, she's going to be searching she all her life for that man. Exactly. And she's going to find all kind of other stuff that is not that man. Absolutely. And so, uh, I, man, I want to commend you on, on the work that you're doing. And, you. and, uh, and I, I'm sorry I missed your debut because I went out of town when, when you had told me it was that week. Right, right. And I'm like, man, I wish I could go to that. But, but I've heard a lot of great things. And then my nephew mm -hmm. it's like, you need, to, you need to meet this guy, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I, I searched you up and I, I, I saw some of the work you were doing. And I said, you know what, there's another brother, you know, that's, that's fighting for the cause, you know. And, and it's a lot of us that's doing it, man. There are. It's a, and, and it's not that my work is better than your work or your work is better than my work we see that people are starting to see man this fatherhood piece is important uh, and essential. and and so what give me some testimonies of some things that has happened with your work okay well some great things have happened for one a lot of uh the people in the audience who watch it have really said look this is my story too mm. and it's caused me to kind of you know not only try to reclaim my position mm. um but it's, it's caused me to really want to go out and do some therapy work some 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 self-work some self-care mm -hmm. the men and women in this book have also said it themselves like i still have a lot of hurt a lot of anger mm -hmm. a lot of emotions i'm dealing with and it's it, it's prompted me to want to go and get some help mm -hmm. um so that's been some of the the the, the most consistent things mm -hmm. um, that i've heard a lot of a lot of women have told me, thank you for doing this. Mm. A lot of women had also said, well, I got a deadbeat dad. He needs to see this, mm. you know? Mm. So I get, it just depends on the audience. Yes. We get a lot. I've yes. heard, you know, we've done some things with colleges too. And I get a lot of good feedback from these 18, 19 year olds who aren't parents yet. Yes. And they say stuff like, you know, well, thank you. That was good. I like what, what so-and-so said. There's a couple of people in that kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. um, I like what he said. I like what she said. And it helps me to put it in perspective when I become a father mm. or when I become a mother. Mm -hmm. Now, at a, at a college, I've had a, 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 a white mother of four mm. who was 26, mother of four, said, hey, I know it's about black fathers, but this is my story, too. Mm -hmm. we, again, I shared it with a, mm -hmm. with a group of Latinx students, and they said, this is our story, too. Mm -hmm. So I just get a whole bunch of different feedback depending upon the audience, mm -hmm. but it's been like... It's really superseded my expectations. Yes. Um, yes. 
I'm not a filmmaker. I'm going to say that, you know, I right. mean, I made a film, right? right. But I, I didn't go into this to become a filmmaker. Right. I just was like, man, I'm just a story needs to be told. Yes. I can't bring Michael Brown Jr. back. Mm -hmm. I'm not in Ferguson, Missouri, but that story affected me. Mm -hmm. Eric Garner affected mm -hmm. me. Alfred mm -hmm. Sterling affected me because mm -hmm. these are black men and some of who were fathers that were taken yes unnecessarily yeah. i just had a friend man and and without getting too much detail he was a father who was killed by the police recently here mm -hmm. uh locally had a, i think a 12 year old daughter you know mm. my daughter you just met yeah. the same age right, right? so just, my daughter's 12 yeah so these man this is this is real this is yeah. real life stuff we're not dealing with some fairy tale mm -hmm. stuff and so again back to the point as black men we go through so many extra hoops and hurdles that man i just we got to tell our stories and document our, ourselves and um in some cases pat ourselves on the back but in some cases we got to let a lot of fire up under our butts to get up out of our seat and start doing the work that's necessary mm -hmm. because our village is hurt now yeah our village has been impacted by the government but our village has also been impacted by some of the things that we involve ourselves mm -hmm. in you know mm -hmm. um our village has been impacted by colonialism, slavery, crack, mm -hmm. et cetera, poverty, mm -hmm. homelessness, gentrification, mm -hmm. all these different things that other communities may not have experienced in the same ways or at all. Mm -hmm. But then they'll point the finger at us and say, well, what, what's going on with y'all? Yeah. You've been here and you ain't done nothing. And, right. yada, yada, yada. and we internalize that message. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, man, we can't um, fall back on what was me because it's going to keep us in the same circles if yeah. you ask me and, I, and again i know some this might be offensive to some mm -hmm. who are hearing this but at the same time this, this is my perspective on it so as a person who's a doer i don't have all the answers i don't have all the resources but i know that there is um you know another african proverb said after you pray move your feet mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. Prayer without works is dead. Yes. So we can sit here and, and want things to change, mm -hmm. but if we're not actually out there trying to make something to change, yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, you know when, one of the things I like about your book, it's not a case study. It's, it's not based on just uh, statistics, nah. uh, but, but you're a hands-on father. Yeah. You are a reality to what's going on. So, so people can understand, they can relate to what you're talking about because there's oftentimes, as you know, that there's PhDs and professors that write books that doesn't have children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're yeah. going based on the statistics. Sure. But then sometimes the statistics is like, I'm a, I'm a contractor, man. I, I used to build houses and commercial buildings, and that's why I can get an analogy about foundations mm -hmm. and it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, an architect can, can draw a set of plans and it makes sense on paper. Yeah. But when you begin to start building it, you're gonna come into some problems yeah. that wasn't in those blueprints. Definitely. And, 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 and you're gonna to have to alter those things. Yeah. And, and, and it's like I said, the statistics based on the book and the statistics based on the blueprints, the blueprints has all the numbers that make sense but it may not make sense when you are on the job site mm -hmm. building it. Mm -hmm. And so when you have hands on as yourself mm -hmm. and myself, then, then the statistics is one thing, but the facts is another Man, thing. I mean, the hands on different. facts. Yeah, a whole different ball game. Um, like I mentioned, you know, when my parents split, my dad still stayed really, you know, still stayed and in, in poured into myself and my younger brother. Um, and he, he kind of went back and told me later on as we adults now as fathers and that my you know had these kind of grown man conversations sometimes you know he said man if i didn't do it if i didn't pour into y'all at 14 15 16 if i tried to come back at 20 21 22 it'd be too late mm -hmm. so i had to kind of you know kind of stay the course even mm -hmm. though the relationship fractured mm -hmm. so the relationship fractured between myself and my daughter's mother mm -hmm. she lives with her mother mm -hmm. so um after the breakup and we don't live too far from each other but after work and doing that all that to try to go do homework mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. still you know mm -hmm. and, and still be present man that that takes oh yeah you, know? you don't have to tell me brother <laughs> you know what I mean? so I that, that but yeah. that's statistically oh yeah it's good to do these things mm -hmm. in practice it's mm -hmm. tough it's difficult you know what I mean? it's difficult to manage your schedule with somebody else's work schedule and the commute and mm -hmm. this and i'm not trying to make the excuses mm -hmm. and i fall short 
sometimes with that. And it pains me because, man, I know that, you know, um, I don't want to be the negative statistic. Right. How can you write this book and you're not living up to right. the thing? So right. it's like it's a it's a it's a bar that I set that I try and live up to, and it's, and it's tough sometimes. It is you know, right. Sometimes that fatherhood or that motherhood, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. That, you know, that's a whole different bar. Oh man. yeah. So oh yeah. Um, anyway, you can have all the greatest, like you say, stats and architects and blueprint, and you can speak from up here and speak down to the people. We're talking about grassroots, on the ground, That's community, right. That's right. you know, hand to hand and hand to mouth type right. of thing. Right. And that's where for us, for me in the community, that's where the, the greatest impact has been. Yes. Um, yeah, I can go to a college and speak and that type of thing. And, you know, I can say, yes, I'm Dr. White and da 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 da. I can play that, mm -hmm. that role, that hand. And, and God has given me the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Malcolm X is on the street corner, right? Talking to people and reaching people at right. their point. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Dr. King was was on the on the ground. That's you know what right. I mean? And I'm not trying to equate myself to no, those giants. Yeah. But at the same time, the community is on the ground, man. The community is not necessarily in the ivory towers right. of of Stanford and Berkeley and all that is great. That has its right. place. But if we're talking about reaching brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. uh, you have to go to where they are. You got to go, you know, we talk about that off, the, yeah. off the air. Yeah. You got yeah. to go on the streets and do that. So we do the community work, the community centers. I'm not in the streets, but I'm definitely in the community. Right. You know what right. I mean? That's the thing. It's a difference to me. And it's important. It's mm -hmm. important. And we're going to have to close and we're going to have to come back again because we can go on and on with this conversation. But what I want to close is, is that's what, that's the thing that Jesus used to do. Yeah. Jesus met the people where they were. Absolutely. Uh, he used parables that they can and he used illustrations that they could identify to meet them where they are. And, and, and so that's why uh, the notorious sinners wanted to hang out with him. That's why the wine bibbers and the tax collectors mm -hmm. and, and the folks that, that nobody else wanted to hang out with, they want to know where you live. <laughs> he said, come with me, let right. me show you. Right. you know, and, and so he was a great example of that. And so, uh, the greatest example. I just want to say, man, thank you for coming to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I think we got a lot more to talk about, sure. and we're gonna have to have a couple more segments of this. Well, I'd love to come back. All right, God bless you, man. Thank you, man. Bless you. Thank you. Again, you've seen uh, another segment of Can We Have a Conversation? Uh, this is not something that uh, is is unusual. It's just unusual for you to see. And this is a brother that had a father that was in his life and it helped shape him and it created the who he is today. And so I believe that we all need to hear more stories like this so to engage other fathers to get them to understand the importance of fatherhood. Until the next time, God bless you.